Hello, Bilish Kavava here with another MTG video. Posting new MTG videos every two days. So if you like what you see, if you like what you hear, why not subscribe to the channel? Why not give it a like? Because it really does help. And I'm loving doing these MTG videos and I'm having a lot of fun. So I'm going to keep doing them. And thanks for the support. So what am I talking about today? Well, today I'm talking about Unstable. This will be my first unset. I never played Unglued or Unhinged, but I'm very excited for this set. Now, normally I don't draft. I am more of a constructor player, but I'm very excited to actually draft this set. I think it looks so fun. I think the mechanics are fun. I think the deck's fun. As for long-term holds, financial value, stuff like that, well, that's going to be a different video, but hunching that it probably won't have much value until the very long term because of the lands, but that's a different topic. Right now, I want to talk about a little bit of the mechanics, a little bit about what's going on in the unstable. Well, firstly, we're going to talk about the look of the box, look of the packs. It looks fantastic. You've got a, a crazy doctor, I guess that's what you would call him, uh, a mad scientist, uh, and he, he looks pretty cool. He looks really cool. He looks really um, dope. He's on the box. You've got the booster packs. The booster packs has like a spider monkey. Has like an evil villain looking thing. Spider monkey woman. Evil looking thing. You got some ogres that are eating each other. He's like three headed ogre. One of them's eating the head of uh, eating the ear of the other one. All looks fantastic. Art looks amazing. Now, what? Uh, some of the mechanics. Well, the mechanics are there's five different factions. Each one of them has a different watermark on the card. You've got the Order of the Widget, which is like a little castle with a gear going around. Order of the Snake, which is like an umbrella, but it's a key. It's like a key umbrella. Uh, League of the Darstelly Doom, which is like a light bulb with a bo with a like an atomic bomb going off. You got the goblins which is like a, a couple of bombs, and you got the crossbreed labs, which is, of course, the double, um, what do you call those things? Like a, a chemistry kind of set looking thing. Uh, cards are uh, silver boarded, of course. There are some that aren't silver boarded. Uh, cards that come from Future Sight, which are being put into it. One of them is actually going to have a black border. Uh, and you've got contraptions. So contraptions actually don't have any border, and they go in a separate deck. They go in a contraption deck. And you can have three of them out there. You can have more than three. But you can only activate them once every three turns. So each time you activate one of them, it moves on to a different uh, spoke. What they're calling, you know, sprocket. So you've got three sprockets. And every time you crank one, you move on to number two. Then you move on to number three. And you can have... So if you have, let's say, a contraption like Dog Snail Engine, which has no border, which is a contraption, goes on your different contraption, and it's singleton, so it's only one, so you can only have one kind of contraption. So you can't have two Dog Snail Engines. You can only have one of them in this deck. And you put him on Sprocket 1. Once you activate that ability at the beginning, then it moves on to Sprocket 2. So you can't use him again because he's on Sprocket 1. So you're going to have to wait three turns to come back to Sprocket 1. So you can use the dog snail engine again. Really interesting. The, the actually the, the sprocket counter is actually the back of the card. So you can just get one random card, flip it to the back side, and that will be your sprocket, your sprocket like uh, holder, where you can hold all your contraptions uh, con connected to the sprocket. So really inventive, really interesting, different mechanics. Looking very forward to draft this set. I think it's, it is a perfect draft set. This is what it's meant to do. Long term hold, probably not worth it. Uh, I mean, if you look at the old unsets, they're worth a lot of money now, but that took a long time. And I have no idea how much Wizards of the Coast is going to print this. I'm expecting they're going to print the shit out of this set because they're printing the shit out of everything so if they print boxes and boxes and boxes of this you're going to be able to find them cheap i think they'll probably dip this time next year they'll be a lot cheaper 
because right now everyone just wants the boxes because they want to draft with them, they want to play with them, it's really exciting, really new mechanics. But in a year's time, no one's going to be drafting this set, and then it will probably go down. And then that's the time to pick it up if you want to have a long-term hold on it. Because then, after like two years, three years, it will probably start creeping back up, depending how much they print of it. If they print like Return to Ravnica numbers on this, then five years from now, it's still going to be like 80 bucks. But that's pretty much it. I think it's a fantastic set. I want to know what you guys are thinking. What are you guys thinking of the unstable? What do you think about the mechanics? You got five different factions. You got the cards look fantastic. I got to say the contraption cards with the no border, full art, no border, look fantastic. You got the contraption mechanics. You got the five different uh, groups, guilds. I think it all looks fantastic. It almost re reminds me of Return to Ravnica with the different guilds. And... I think it's going to be a really fun time. I don't really draft, but I'm going to be drafting this set a lot when it first comes out. The month of December, I'm going to be drafting this all December and probably all of uh, January. And then it'll probably like taper off and the people will stop drafting it at the game store at the local, the local LGS. But until then, I think it's fun. I think it's really fun. I think it's really inventive. I think the art looks fantastic. Some of these arts are like, unbelievable. I, I kind of like the silver border as well. It looks interesting. And I think this is a, this could be fantastic cards to play in like a fun commander deck. Like if you have a, like a commander play group that doesn't really care about the silver border rules and stuff like that, you can actually infuse some of these into the commander decks and just have like a wild time on it. And in five years time, this is probably going to look back and you're going to be like, I want to draft that set. So it might not be bad to have a box or two just hanging around. But that's my opinion. What do you guys think about this? Do you guys like this unstable? Do you don't like this unstable? Well, how does it compare to the other unsets? I don't know because I haven't played them. So tell me down in the comment section. Do you like these mechanics? They're pretty interesting. They're pretty out there. So please, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Bilishka Vava, out.